All right, today we're going to talk about how to write functions in terms of other variables and also odd and even functions. So our first one says, rectangle with a perimeter of 24 centimeters, express the area in terms of the length. Whenever they say express, that's what we're trying to find. So we're trying to find the area in terms of length, meaning the only variable we want in our area is length. But typically, a rectangle has a length and a width. So currently, the area of our rectangle is length times width. Now, we know a little bit more about this rectangle. They tell us the perimeter was 24. So we know that 24 equals 2L plus 2W, or that we're trying to replace the W in our area function, then we need to solve this perimeter equation for W, so we can replace it. So we get 24 minus 2L divided by 2 equals W, or 12 minus L is W. So that means our area in terms of L would be L times 12 minus L, or 12L minus L squared. Now express the area of an equilateral triangle as a function of its size. This is a little bit interesting. So we have an equilateral triangle. We'll label the side S. Typically, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. But we want it in terms of S. So maybe we should write this as A of S. So we know that the base is an S, and we need to figure out what the height is. In order to do that, we're going to have to cut this rectangle in half. And if we look at just half of this rectangle to get the height, we know this is 1 half S. We also know that this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So if this is 30, this is 60, this is 90, typically in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, we've got X, 2X, and X radical 3. Well, we want the height. If X is half of S, all we have to do is plug that in for X, and we get 1 half S radical 3, or radical 3 over 2 S. And that is our expression for our height. So we end up with radical 3 over 4 S squared as our area in terms of the size length. done because it said express the area in terms of the side length. Our side length was, that, was S. It's our only variable in our answer, so we're good to go. Next one, an open rectangular box with a volume of two meters cubed and a square base. Express the surface area of the box as a function of the size. So we have a box, and it's open top meaning there is no top, they want us to express the surface area as a function of the size of the base. So let's label our base. It has a square base, so we know both of those sides are x. We'll call our height y. So its volume, although we want it in terms of x, right now is x times x times y, or x squared y. We know Scratch that. We know that this, oh, this x squared y is equal to 2. And we're trying to find the surface area in terms of x. Right now, our surface area is the sum of the areas of all the sides. So we have an x squared, and we have four sides that are x times y for the front, the back, the left, and the right. We don't need the top because it's open topped. So we need to replace this y so that our surface area is in terms of x. So, if I solve this for y, y is 2 over x squared, so that means our surface area in terms of x is x squared plus 4x times 2 over x squared. Or, if we simplify a little bit, x squared plus 8 over x. That's our surface area 
in terms of x. And we're done because we wanted to express the surface area in terms of the length of the side, x. And we did that by writing it entirely in terms of x. Number four, a, cardboard, a piece of cardboard 8 inches by 10 inches has identical squares, side length x, cut out of every corner. It is then folded up to make an open rectangular box. Express the volume V of the box in terms of x. So, our volume is equal to length times width times the height. And I'm color coding here so you can kind of see what we're talking about. The length, when this is folded into a box, is going to be this long. Because those end flaps are going to be folded up, that will be how long the box is. The entire side of that piece of cardboard is 10 inches. We cut an X off of this side and an X off the right side. So that green line is equal to 10 minus 2X. Cut one X off the end, another X off the other. The width will be this length once all those flaps are folded up. It started at 8. We cut an X off the bottom and an X off the top. So it's going to be 8 minus 2x. And our height, when we fold it all up, is going to be this length. Because that's how long our flaps are, or this one. I mean, there's a couple ways to think about it, but that simply has a length of x. So, there it is in factored form. If they want it as a polynomial, you should rewrite it to spoil it all out. 4x cubed minus 36x squared plus 80x. On the back, let's remind you about even and odd. This is also something that you've learned in pre-calc. It's even if f of x is what we get when we plug in negative x. The other catch about even functions is that they are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Which means if we folded the y-axis, each half would line up. So, let's look. f of x is 1 minus x fourth to the fourth. So, algebraically, we could check this by plugging in a negative x. Well, negative x plugged in. Negative x plugged in is the same thing as 1 minus x to the fourth because negative x to the fourth power would just be x to the fourth power. And if you notice, our f of x is equal to our f of negative x, which means it is an even function. An example of that, or when I graph this particular even function, something that looks a little bit like an upside down parabola, and it is symmetric to the y-axis when you draw it really well. Touch off. But odd, on the other hand, is when f of negative x is equal to the opposite of f of x. And an odd function is, is symmetric with respect to the origin, which is a little bit weird. Um, just means that if you have the point 1, 2, you're also going to have the opposite of each of those points. So like 1, 2 and negative 1, negative 2. 3, 3 and negative 3, negative 3. So the signs on both ordered pairs change when you graph those. Now, algebraically, we know that f of x is x to the fifth plus x. f of negative x is negative x to the fifth plus negative x, which works out to be negative x to the fifth, because negative 1 to the fifth power is going to keep a negative, minus x. Now, check. Does this match f of x? It does not. So it's, we know that it's not even. If we pull out a negative, does what's in here match our f of x? And it does, that means it's odd. If, after you pull out the negative, it still doesn't match, then it would fall into a category called neither. It's not even nor odd, it's neither. And that does happen quite a bit of time. Uh, graph 
slide for this one, you get a function that looks something like this. If you notice, the points 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 2 are both on there, and the pattern continues as you go farther out.